Hi, I'm Melissa, blogger at Melly Sews and owner of Blank Slate Patterns. Welcome to my class on digital pattern making. This is the first lesson in the unit, and today we're going to cover basic illustrator layout and tools that you will use for pattern making. Welcome to Illustrator. Today I'm going to give you an overview of the Illustrator workspace and the primary tools I use in Illustrator for pattern drafting and design. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to open a new file in Illustrator. To do this, you will go to File, New, and you're going to choose one artboard and make it 10 inches by 10 inches. This is just to give us room to play today. The orientation doesn't really matter. This bleed stuff down here I never use. Um, so just set yours up like this and you're going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Cancel because I've already got mine on the screen. This is my 10 inch by 10 inch artboard. If you look over here on the right hand side, the very bottom one, this is the artboard menu. If I click on this, you can see that I've got one artboard here. You can create multiple artboards in Illustrator, and we will be doing that in a future lesson. Multiple artboards are used when you are creating a PDF pattern because each artboard corresponds then to one page of the PDF. So you can easily design, draft, and set up your whole pattern, and when it prints, each artboard will print out as one page. In Illustrator, you can design out here outside the artboard, but only the things on the artboard will print when you send something to print. We're going to go over several of the primary tools that I use in pattern making. You'll see right now um, I've got the black arrow that is the select tool. And um, I can't really show you what it does because I don't have anything on my artboard to select. So what we're going to use first is over here, this one, and this is called the pen tool. And if I click on that, what I'm going to use it for, what a pen tool does, is when you hold it on the artboard and click, it creates this dot, and that is called an anchor point. Anchor points are the foundation of anything you create in Adobe Illustrator. If I have a highlighted anchor point, like you can see this is highlighted because it's bright blue right now. If it was a color and then white in the middle, that's a non-highlighted anchor point. And you'll see that in just a second. If I have a highlighted anchor point and I click anywhere else with the pen, Illustrator is going to draw a line between the two. So let's pretend I was going to just draft a bodice-ish pattern. As you notice, this only does straight lines between the anchor points. So I'm just going to do straight lines and kind of a bodice shape. Um, you'll see the green guide that's popping up on the screen. That helps me know that I'm currently aligned in a straight line with that anchor point above me there. And let's come over here. And you can see the green line pops up again and that means that I'm aligned with the horizontally with the other anchor point. I'm going to come up over here and when I go from the last highlighted thing to click again on the first anchor point I made, what I've done is created a closed path. That means that this path um, is joined and when I move, move this, if I select it, it'll all move together because it's a closed path. So let's talk about the select tool now that we have a chance, now that we have an object to select. The black one is the select object tool. So when I select it, you'll see it highlights every single anchor point. If I um, click and hold down, I can move it. I can drag it around my screen and the whole thing is coming together. Okay. If I use the white arrow, this is a direct selection tool. It's only going to select one part of a thing. So if I click it on here, well, first, all my anchor points are selected right now. But let's say I click it on just a part. You see how all my anchor points are not highlighted? And that means that if I drag just this line, it's going to drag just that part of the line. I can also use this to select 
only one anchor point. For example, if this is going to be my shoulder of my bodice, I've made it way too wide. So I might select just that anchor point and I'm going to move it over on the path so that that shoulder is more shoulder width, not so wide. Okay. Again, this still doesn't look quite like a bodice because it's all like trapezoidal and not curved. So we're going to go over here to the pen tool again. If you click and hold down on the pen tool, you'll notice that some different pen tool options pop up. The one I'm going to use is the bottom one here called the Convert Anchor Point Tool. What this does is takes an anchor point that is just creating straight lines right now and it turns it into an anchor point that you can curve. So if this is going to be my sleeve here, I'm going to click on this anchor point because that's where I want to create the curve. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag out to the side. And you see it creates these handles here. Those handles will allow me to create the curve the way I want it to look. I'm going back to the direct selection tool, the white arrow, and I'm going to pull the handles. And you see how they behave in tandem, like it's like a seesaw. If I move one handle and I'm clicking and dragging, if I move one handle, the other one does an equal and opposite reaction. So I'm going to look at the bottom of the sleeve first, and I'm going to pull it out to a sleeve-like curve. And this still doesn't look right to me, so I'm going to pull this over, and aha, now it's starting to look kind of like a sleeve. I'm actually going to move this side of the handle closer, and voila, now we have something that more closely resembles what you're used to seeing as a bodice pattern. If I do the same thing again, convert anchor point over here, we can create this to a nice smooth neckline. And I'm going back to the direct selection tool because I only want to work with this anchor point. And I'm going to pull this handle a little bit. And you can see now how I've created something that resembles a neckline. So now I have something that more closely resembles a bodice piece, the shoulder still. Obviously, I wasn't using any me uh, measurements, so the shoulder still looks a little funny here. That's a very deep armhole I've made. Um, I could fix that by selecting again with the direct select tool just these two anchor points, which is going to move this whole line in. You see how it changes the curve a little bit too. So, okay, now we're starting to look a lot more like a bodice. Um, just because I'm being picky there. There we go. Another tool that you might use quite a bit in pattern making is the text tool. So if I click on that, I'm going to then click somewhere on my artboard. And you'll see up here, this gives me my text size and options. And I'm going to th use this font, that's fine, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that we can see it easier. And then you just type on your screen and it creates the text. Once you have finished creating the text you want, you can select text just the same way you se we selected and moved the bodice around. So I can use the select tool here and I'm going to just click on and drag my text right into where I want it. Let's talk about a couple of other things, a couple of other variations that you can do with the lines here, your pattern lines. When I select this, I up here in the top, it shows me the stroke and the fill. So let's talk about what's stroke and what's fill. Stroke is the outline of any object. So right now you see I've got a black color selected for stroke. If I click on the drop down arrow, I can select any color I want. Maybe I want this to be green for some reason because this size is going to be green and that's how I differentiate my sizes. So now you can see that this is a green outline of a bodice. Typically, the default on Illustrator is going to be to fill in your object with white. I actually like to remove the fill from my object, which is this um, red slash through the white box, and that means there's no fill in the object, and the fill is what goes in the middle. The reason I do this is when I am looking at a paper image that I scanned in, and it's a digital picture, and I'm outlining it with my pen tool, I don't want the white fill because that would cover up the image that I'm copying, basically. So you use that no fill button to change it. But if for some reason you wanted, like you're drawing um, a paper doll or something and not just making a pattern, let's use a fill color and then you can see the whole object gets filled in. I'm going to go back to no fill here and I'm going to go back to a black stroke to show you something else with the stroke. Strokes also have a weight, 
And the stroke weight is indicated here and in another place I'll show you in a minute. But um, the, the weight is how wide, basically, that the outline is. If I change it to something huge, you'll see that suddenly the outline becomes a lot darker. Um, I typically design with one point strokes for pattern design because you don't want big fat lines and then have people like cutting and guessing where within the line to cut. Um, there are a few places I will use a wider stroke and that will be the subject of upcoming lessons, but typically I use the one point stroke. You can also, because I don't use colored lines to differentiate my pattern sizes, I use dashed lines. And that is over here on the right side of the panel, and it's very easy to create a dashed line in Illustrator. All you do is select the path or the object that you're trying to make a dashed line, and you'll go and you'll hit, this is the stroke menu over here. When you click on it, you can see that you can change the weight of the stroke from this menu as well, but you can also very easily turn this into a dashed line by checking this box. And so the dashed line that I've created right now is a one point dash and then a two point gap, a three point dash, and then a four point gap. And what that looks like on the object, and let me zoom in for you here so that you can see a little better. You can see that the dashed line is a little dash and a big dash and some varying spacing in between. You can change that. Um, the default one that will probably pop up for you is going to be a 12 point dashed line. And so if I again select the object and then I can change this to a 12 point dashed line and you can see this is what a 12 point dashed line is. So you can make any size dash, any, you can play with it, um, anything that you want in there. We do want to look at the corners real quick. So I'm going to scroll up here so you can see the corner right here. This is one of the corners. If you select a different kind of corner, it will have your dashes. Well, I have to have the object selected. But if you select a different kind of corner, you can see how it changed it to make sure that the dash actually went around the corner instead of just dash lines meeting at the corner, which is what we had at first. I'll go back to show you the difference. So you see how this one here, it kind of leaves up to guess where guesswork where the corner is. So I prefer personally to change mine to these kinds of corners. And that's easier than I think for the person using the pattern to see where to cut. So these are the basic tools that I use for Illustrator. These are the most often used tools. There are a couple of keyboard shortcuts I do use a lot that I'll talk about real quick. To zoom in and zoom out, what I'm doing here, I'm hitting, I'm on a Mac, so I'm hitting Command and minus, zooms out, Command and plus, zooms in. I believe that on a PC you can hit Control and minus or Control and plus, and that will zoom in and out for you. The other thing um, that I use quite a bit is the Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC which will undo whatever you just did. So let's say I accidentally like did something funky and I completely, oh wow, what did I just do there? That's awful. Command Z and it all goes back to where I had it. And what I actually did there was I had created, um, I had pulled out a curve um, and, and messed with those handles that I had created earlier. So Command Z, I'm back to where I was. Don't freak out. You can even like, mess up a whole bunch of stuff like uh oh what did I do here and oh man I've created like and then I moved that and this doesn't look like a bodice at all anymore. Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, I'm back to where I was. So that is a huge useful tool. Again for PCs it's Control Z not Command Z but if you don't have that shortcut um, memorized you should because you will use it all the time. Um, finally let's say that I wanted on purpose that I'm making this bodice a little longer because I want maybe a drop waist. So I've selected those points, I've moved them down, and um, I accidentally command Z, uh oh, and I want it back to where it was. This is going to go sh um, shift command Z and that will go redo what I undid. And it, it's the same as command Z that you can use it multiple times to keep redoing, redoing, redoing. Um, I, on PCs, that's going to be shift Control z instead of shift command z But those two get used quite a bit by me. Those are the two, um, or three, I guess, keyboard shortcuts is the undo, 
redo, and then the zoom in and out. And that's it. Those are really like, there are all these tools over here and I don't really use them too much in Illustrator. There are a couple that come in, but the primary tools that you use for pattern design, the select, the direct select, the pen tool, which has the convert anchor point within it, um, and the text tool. The rest of these, some of them never get opened. Um, so hopefully I've made this not scary for you if you're thinking that you want to use Illustrator for pattern design. And in future lessons, I'll cover how to scan and digitize your patterns, how to, exactly to trace them out with a pen, how to draft within Illustrator using measurements, how to add um, markers and formatting so that your patterns print easily and are easy for your customers to assemble, and um, how to grade. There's actually a way I've discovered within Illustrator that makes grading patterns fairly easy. So all of these are upcoming lessons or future lessons in this course that I hope you will take. Thank you.